morning from a very wet Creswell. So we're back on the Lancashire Derbyshire and East Coast Railway today, just continuing our journey down the line towards um, towards Langwith Junction, where we're going today. So we're starting at Creswell. We're not starting from this station though. Um, this is the bottom station. This is was Creswell and Elmton. We're actually going up the hill to the top station, what used to be called Creswell and Welbeck, or Creswell for Welbeck, depending on which era you're from. So in today's video, we're going to be following the blue line, starting at the top at Creswell, through past the Langworth Colliery Junction and onto Langworth Junction, just north of Shirebrook. So this end of the Baton Branch opened in 1897. The section that we're going to be seeing today closed in two sections, which we'll discuss as we go along. The first section from Creswell closed in 1967, when traffic was rerouted by a new section of track to the now Robin Hood line which you can see here is the yellow line running parallel to our blue line. So we'll see that later in the video too. So the top station was opened in 1897 as Creswell and Welbeck, but after only a few months was renamed to Creswell 4 Welbeck. The line crossed the road via a bridge that we can see on this old photo, with the station situated on the clown side of the road. Like with other stations we see on the LDECR, it closed to passenger services in 1939. So here's the old station master's house, clock still on the wall there. So this is where the bridge would have gone over. As you can see, nothing, nothing left. You can see these little remnants that there used to be a line here, a bank close. There used to be an embankment it's going off down there. Someone pointed this out in my last video. The cuttings. I think it's going to be a muddy one today. So, as we saw on the last instalment, excuse me while I make a. What's job of getting up that embankment? The line's going off in that direction, through the station and towards Clown. And as we saw, the bit around, the bit around Creswell is just developed on. But 100 yards out of the station, we can join the old trap bed up towards the colliery, Creswell Colliery. So we've got no let up in the rain yet. Just done the, the trap bed, just leaving Creswell behind there. So we've got the site of the Creswell Colliery, just to the left hand side here. Now that's subject of a bit of development at the minute. I did try to get on there in the autumn just to have a look around, um, see if there's anything left of the old lines going in. But I was met with a, a barrier of security fences, workmen. Looks like they're putting up a lot of new houses on that site. And I know there's a new leisure centre being built just over there also on the site of the colliery. So the LDECR Baton Branch, this is the final, the final chapter of the journey. 14 months ago we started that journey from down at Baton, the bridge at Rother Valley. That seems like well, a long time ago but it just seems to have gone so quick. But in the last year it's been on fast forward times 30. It's just crazy. So yeah, a couple of videos I've done through Clown up to Creswell and uh, we're going to see the last bit today so a lot of this section some parts of this section are not accessible with private land now so there's going to be quite a few sections where we can't get to and for those come in the running gear underneath the waterproof somewhere so i can just skip those parts and get to the bits that we're interested in so that was one of the first railway explore videos that i did on that section from Baton to killer marsh last just as we were so, sorry, it's going to be a theme today, negotiating these wet patches. I don't want to get trench foot within the first 10 minutes though, so go around the side. Yeah, we were just literally just going into lockdown for the second time that week, January 2021. So it does feel like a lot's gone on in that short time frame. Got a bit of a cutting that we're entering here. So not much on that first section to see really. 
and keeping my eye open as I always do. So the railway line goes straight through there, straight in front, that lovely, clear, empty green space. So there's big private land signs dotted about here. And we're being diverted just up to the, uh, to the right hand side. Right, so while we're on this bit of a detour away from the line, just a bit of geography. So if we come from over there, that area you can see, the hills, that's Creswell Colliery. That's the kind of spoil tip. And those trees we can see in front there, literally next door, is, um, is Polter Country Park. And that used to be a Langwith Colliery. That was the, the kind of spoil tip for there. So the line's running just between the two. Yeah, but we've also got, in the distance, I'll show you when we get closer, we've also got the Robin Hood line. They pretty much run parallel for uh, for most of the journey from Creswell to where we're going today. But we'll cover that a bit more when we get back on the line. But right, we're back to the, uh, the disused line now. And I say we're back to the disused line because you would never know. So, it's coming to this little set of houses and this is where that's where we just left it just there where we saw that green greenery come across the line's completely gone you'd never know it's just a field completely erased and it follows roughly I believe where so that edge row is going off in that direction so we've got a crossing here old style crossing gates I've just seen a, a crossing attendant come and open them for a van a few minutes ago so that's the Robin Hood line. We're not going to be crossing that. We're going on the footpath just to the right hand side. The name of this footpath that we're going to be following, well we've been following it for a bit actually, is uh, the archaeological way. I believe we're going to be on that all the way up to uh, up to Shirebrook. I believe that's Norwood Crossing. Right, so as you can see, we're walking along the side of the uh, the Robin Hood line now, right on the side of it. So. Our LD and ECI is just over there, about 100, well, I'd say 200 yards over there. That's where that house is, running that way. It's just in front, not too far now, another 50 yards where our disused railway um, explore starts to get a little bit more interesting, I think. Okay, so that's the footpath we've just walked on. Just come up this banking. There's the Robin Hood line. There. So, significance of this. So, going off in this direction is, uh, is our first bit of disused line for a while and uh, this is, well, I think what I'll actually do is just hand you over and show you a few maps that will probably explain it a little bit better. So here's an old photo looking back towards that level of crossing we've just seen taken from roughly the same location that I've just been standing. So what we're interested in here is that black line. So the LDECR north of here was closed in 1967. However, traffic from Langwith Colliery still used the line, but 67, traffic from the LDECR was diverted onto the Robin Hood line via that black line. However, this only lasted from 1967 to 1974 when the LDECR closed fully. So we're, we're curving round there. We're curving away from the Robin Hood line there. On a class 20s. Just keeping my eye out. So obviously this is a quite, in terms of railway history, it's quite a recently built section of line this. I'm finding little bits of concrete scattered about. Probably from various installations. Yeah, more bits of concrete. Plenty of ballast on this section. So he closed in 1974, this section, but, but we are coming up to now the site of the old Langwith colliery. So anyway, it's probably best to show you what I'm going to get up to now with the, uh, with the help of a map. And it's that same map again. So we've just been walking down that black cord from the Robin Hood line to our blue LDECR. So we're now at the bottom of that black cord uh, and you'll see there's an arcing line that goes over the top of the Robin Hood line. Now that goes in to the former Langwith Colliery. 
So we're going to have a look down that line as far as we can and also around the junction. I can see yet more concrete things in those trees. I'm going to find a, let's see if I can find a little bit of a clearing in these uh, quite thick uh, bushes. Just try and get inside and just have a look on that banking because just there is the, uh, the original route of the LDECR just joining us. Yeah, no joy getting in there so far. I've got about two meters in and it's really not worth it. I can see there is concrete things in there, but it's pretty much just those, the concrete ducting things that we've just seen further along so far. So I'll keep my eye. In fact, what's this on the left hand side? There's some brickwork or something over here. Now we're just coming up literally just in front where that Langwith colliery line leaves us. Um, so I think this is would have been the location for the for the signal box. So we've got here yeah, we've got tin or metal there brackets. I wonder if there was like a little tin hut or something next to the next to the signal box. Well, it's well buried. Plenty of brickwork. There we go bricks sticking out but let's just have a look over here because there was quite a lot of structure like I say I'm opening this as the the signal box so thanks for Thomas for sending me these photographs um, these really really helped put in place what I've just been looking at we can even see that little tin hut in front of the signal box there and I think that's just what we could see sticking out of the ground wow we've got a signal just lying there, hidden away, covered in. And a bracket there. Zoom that would be the, the top of the signal. You've got all the little brackets there where the, the whatnots and thingamajiggies would go. It's gone all the way. Could have done with Pete and his big poking stick round about now. So, a lot of metal work. All this goes all the way. And then, excuse me, tangled up in the... That's so much brickwork. Posts. I really didn't expect. Oh, got a fence there. Metal rods sticking out of that. So is this the signal box? I reckon it is. Or, f or something left from the foundations of the signal box, should I say, not, not the actual signal box. But slightly similar to what we saw at Killamarsh, isn't it? So yeah, so where the structure is, we've got the LD ECR, that side, and the Langwith colliery line, just arcing off towards that direction. So we're inside, we're in between the two lines now. So I tripped up over that fence on the way in and I've just tripped up on the way out as well. Yeah, that's... I love finding the old signal, the signal posts. Now to find a signal post, I think it's quite exciting, but to find it with, still with all those brackets and metalwork still, still in place. Still got the wood there, I'm assuming, for the platform at the top. That's if I am looking at it the right way around. Yeah, and there's more. Try and move some of these leaves. Oh. 
Sorry, I got a bit overexcited there. I think uh, excitement levels for today have been down here and we've just rocketed. Yeah, well, more brickwork. It's about 10 yards on from the signal box. Some writing on those bricks, but it's quite faded. Right, so that's what I'm going to do now is, so we're at the junction now with the line they went off to Langwith Colliery, that curve that, that we see that crossed the Robin Hood line, just, just a short distance in that direction. Um, so I'm just going to go and take a little detour around there. Actually, first I'm just going to walk up just a little bit further up here, see if we can see anything else. And then I'm going to do the Langwith line. And then I don't have to come back this way, do I? So I'm still on the main LD ECR, but I can see it finishes just in front. Plenty of those little concrete posts. Something here, if I can just find a way in. Some, that tree looks very sharp. I can confirm it is. Not like they've uh, got some kind of fire damage or something, but some wooden posts sticking up out of the ground all the way oh, right yeah all the way around here so this would have been something so we've got right lots of wood buried here as well wood sticking out all the way around there so could have been anything could have been a ground frame or something possibly now we've got a cut in right next to us here and right where these bits of wood is it goes in, like the cutting goes, so I mean some kind of recess, something here. I can't go any further, looks like the, the path's flooded, but from here, this so this is the old spoil tip from uh, Langworth Colliery, and it's now Polter Country Park, and uh, it's basically the, the railway vanishes, it goes underneath now what's landscaped, it's now a country park, so there's no point going any further in that direction. And I've just spotted in the distance what I assume would be the the base of a of a signal post. Just drop a little bit of moss away so you can see. There we go. There we go, that's as far as we'll go down here. So yeah, it goes uphill from here. So I'll do what I've just said I'm going to do and just head back and go around that, that curve on the Langworth Colliery branch. See if we can find anything interesting on there. All right, seeing this on the side of the path, not sure what it is exactly. I thought from a distance it was fish plates or something. It's really heavy. Is it? Or is it a telegraph pole perhaps? I don't know. It could be a fish plate. The size of these bolts. Really rusted. I can see the path going off the end of uh, off the end of the earth here, so this must be the where the bridge went over the, the Robin Hood line. Obviously no, it's no longer there the bridge. We can't go any further down this line now. But we are on quite a quite a large embankment now. Both sides, so we've climbed up quite a bit. Now let's go and see if we can uh, find any any remnants of uh, this bridge that used to be here. So that's the lines down there. I can see, is that a coping stone? Just there. Not what else I can see. Can't really see anything on the other side. There's too many trees in the way, at the, uh, the other side of the, the other side of the line. There's plenty of bricks about as well on this side so yeah we can't go any further towards Langworth Colliery but um, I might one day and I've got a spare few hours I know it's not much over there but let's go and have a have a scout about the other side so right from here we've got another section now where we lose obviously you've seen the line was was back where we came from so about a kilometer or two I think mile mile and a half over Polter Country Park, and I'll I'll pick you up when we get to the uh, the other side. So I'm right on top of Polter Country Park. So the the line we're following is underneath 
here quite some distance underground I would suspect but it's passing this nice bit of history it's in a little plinth here just uh, just details a bit about during the, the first world war and then a couple of a couple of disasters at a factory that was on this site and then a, a world war ii plane crash Very sad. So that was a little jog over the top of the, the country park there. It's dropping down now, uh, back onto the back onto the line because I can see the uh, the abutment. There's just one side of a bridge left. But I came here yesterday to walk the dog, just to have a, a nosy somewhere to go. And there's all this, this masonry. It's it's dopey. Now, it's fairly confident in assuming this was from the uh, from the bridge because as you'll see in a minute when we get down there there's one side of the bridge is completely completely erased and there's a lot of these a lot of this masonry plenty of stonework looks like and the coping stone from the top so from looking at the bridge the alignment this must have been around where where the line was just here so this is this is the banking coming back and i did see somebody actually put this on facebook a few years ago thinking it was something to do with uh, with a like a signal post or something but i think it turns out somebody did provide some uh, kind of information that it was from the actual bridge that we're going to see in a minute so as you can see here this looks like the abutment from a railway bridge, you'd be correct. Just try not to run over, get run over. So it's just one one half a bridge. So yeah, as you can see, the other the other half's completely completely missing. Now we did see all that masonry. So as you can see we're still on the archaeological way leading to Shirebrook. So it's the first time I've seen that mentioned. So we we'll go up the side of the embankment and we can rejoin we can rejoin the uh, the disused railway line. Right, so I think this is the final section now and towards Shirebrook. Well we're not actually going to Shirebrook, we're actually going to Langwith Junction. Trees, we will have to fight the vegetation, but it looks like we've got an old signal post there. So I do drive underneath. Uh, I drive on this road that we're about to cross now and I do know that at some stage this this bridge this bridge we're going to walk over has been added um, it was missing for, for many many years and I can't remember the year that that um, ah, there's a plaque here 2014 so we don't have to go down nether language down there it's quite a drop is this an old sleeper I spy it certainly is it looks like we did have something here about 50 yards 50 yards up there's a lot of concrete and reinforced concrete so what did this used to be a, a hut or something Just come up the side of the side of the line. A nice little arch bridge. I'm seeing if I can get a view down down onto the trap bed. A few trees in the way, but it's a great cutting down there. I'll get down there and have a closer look. Does look like this bridge has had some kind of repair some time or other. A lot of newer bricks. Look at this cutting that we're going into now. It's lovely. I was just up on that bridge a minute ago.
so you can see where all the masonry's fallen off the top where they've had to make those those repairs. This cutting is just getting deeper and deeper. Right, so I can see houses in front, so we must be getting to the end of, our, uh, of the disused railway. So just before we get to Langwith Junction, which is just approaching, um, probably just a good idea just to recap some of the history, Lancashire, Derbyshire and East Coast Railway. So originally they had grand intentions of going from the east, I think Sutton on Sea, Port at Sutton, across to Warrington in the west. Now, obviously, if you know the LDECR now, it only sort of goes as far, it comes from Lincoln, and it only went as far as Chesterfield. Now that was meant to be the main line, it was meant to go from Chesterfield across the Peak District and over towards Warrington, didn't make it. Um, they ran out of money, I think the intentions weren't really backed up by economical needs. So, so yeah, it kind of fizzled out and they got bought out by the Great Central Railway not long after. So what we're approaching now, Langworth Junction, is where the main line, the Chesterfield, I'll say it's a Lincoln, but you know what I mean, um, meets our Baton branch. The Baton branch is just a branch line off what was intended to be the main line. So yeah, so this is where we'd have the Chesterfield line coming in from that direction and we would meet it here. Now, sadly, I'm coming a few years too late to make this video really because on the site of the old station, Langworth Junction Station, that we'll talk about uh, in a short while, is now a, uh, a new housing estate. And there is the track bed going off straight through there. So this is the station, the old station site. So the station opened in 1897 as Langworth Junction, which is what I've been referring to it as, but in 1924 it was renamed to Shybrook North. The station itself was quite extensive, there were four platforms, a host of station buildings, a good shed and quite a community built up around the station that was part of the railway. Passenger services ceased Sheffield in 1939, Chesterfield in 1951 when the Chesterfield Marketplace line closed, and passenger services towards Lincoln stopped in 1955. However, it was actually our Baton branch which saw freight traffic until 1974. The old station house is still there. I'm just walking down, I don't even know if I can get through here. So that's the site of the station, looking in that direction. And here's a, here's a little bit of railway line. It comes from the wagon works. This is a, this connects to the main line, so we've still got a buffer stop there. Not sure if you can get down this way. So here's a photograph from 1985 that shows the station platforms and some track still in place. So that train stood in round about the same place that that buffer stop is. So just where those containers are used to be uh, used to be a good shed. So I think this connects this bit of line we're seeing here connects to the uh, the Robin Hood line. But years gone by, the line went straight across, continued the LDECR. It crossed over the Robin Hood line on a uh, on a girder bridge. It's no longer there now. And that is the end of our Baton branch. Quite a sad end really. So just walking back up to the road, looks like this used to be the edge of the railway land. And I'm assuming these items left here used to be from the old footbridge across the station. And it went straight across there. And here's the other side of the, of the footbridge. It's an interesting legacy of the railways is that this area is called Langworth Junction for no other reason than it was Langworth Junction on the LDECR. And it even says that on the shop, Langworth Junction stores. So that's it, a fascinating journey from Baton. Can't believe that's only 12 miles long. That seems, I'd say, more like 25. Um, 
So I've done the majority of it that you can do. There's some bits and bobs I'll fill in. A uh, bit around Spin Kill I plan to go back and do. So if you've watched all of my videos and you've enjoyed the journey with me, let me know in the comments which bit was your favourite. So I'll sign off there. Thanks for watching as always. Take care and I'll see you again soon.